Hello, my beautiful friends on the internet. How you all doing? Welcome to my video tutorial today. Uh, we are going to be looking at OCR. So uh, you guys are going to see how we can use uh, machine learning to extract text from a photo or any image at all. So uh, what is OCR? OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition. So I'm actually uh, going to use a definition from Google uh, to let you guys know what it means. So you can also call it Optical Character Reader. So it's, uh, it's the electronic or mechanical conversion of images of typed, handwritten or printed text into machine encoded text. So what does that mean? Uh, with OCR technology, we can actually extract any text from any photo. Yeah, we can extract the text from the photo. Uh, let's say a printed document, we can extract the text uh, and then edit it. Uh, let's say images or whatsoever, we can just extract the text from those photos and then use it. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to be looking into handwritten, okay, to actually extract handwritten uh, documents, okay? Uh, so I'll only focus on uh, typed or printed text because this um, Google Firebase uh, machine learning does not uh, have the ability to, uh, to extract hand handwriting, though it can extract it, but the characters are not uh, in order so it's not really nice for handwritten uh, documents so it's only good and perfect for typed and printed text all right so we're going to see how that thing i'm going to do here is to introduce us to the uh, dependencies that will be needed for this tutorial so the first one you can see here is google ml kit for test recognition so what does this do it's a uh, it's a flutter plugin to recognize text in any language chinese japanese korean or latin character so our latin character is like a b c d e f g yeah all those latin characters so you can see the procedures of how to use it and then extract the text from the image so uh without further ado i'm just going to copy this stuff and go to my code this is just a new code uh, project i created okay so uh, what you want to do is to open your terminal because if you go to my prospect to terminal file right now, there is no dependency. So we have to quickly add that stuff. So we just use this to add it. Uh, why is adding? We are going to add the next one, which is image picker. So this will allow us to open up the camera to select an image or open up the gallery to select an image. All right. So this is what. Uh, image picker will do for us. So I will quickly add this one too to my poxpec.yaml file. Okay, just as I did for the first one. So you can see Google ML Kit is already here. Yeah. So uh, the next one, which is the final one, is image cropper. So for the sake of this tutorial, I want you to, I want our users to have the ability to crop the image. So after picking an image from gallery or camera, so they should be able to crop it so that's why i'm using this image cropper plugin for that you can see it supports android ios and web and this is how it works yeah you can see uh everything so this is actually kind of uh, how we are going to use it okay so i'll just copy this but not now uh, let's go back to our project and then i'm going to add this dependency as well for cropping our image all right, so I'll give you some few seconds. Uh, once this is added, uh, let's look if there's anything we need to uh, configure for Android or iOS parts. So it seems that uh, no configuration is needed, but for Android, we need to add this uh, activity inside our main activity. Yeah, for it to work for Android. This is for the image cropper, okay? So we're gonna go over to our Android uh, directory and go over to app source and main they will locate our android the manifest file so under this activity here yeah i believe under here we are going to paste our code yep so you want to make sure you actually format it properly okay yeah that's it and after adding that we are going to go over again back to uh, image picker yeah so inside image picker i think there are some things we need to add as well so for android i think yep we need to add this uh legacy support so that we have access to pick images uh yep so i'm going to go over to 
right right here i'm going to paste it here still inside our main activity now, okay go back i think there are also some dependency i need to add for the ios bit okay that will allow us to uh, pick image uh, more like a description okay so i think this is it all right so uh there is no way to actually add that inside this bit i think i'll quickly grab that somewhere and insert it okay all right so i just uh copied some tests somewhere so i'm going to add that inside our info.plist file for ios so this stuff i'm adding now you guys are going to see it uh, because we are using the image uh, plugin and we are going to be uh, accessing the gallery from the user's device and also the camera so i needed to add this permission inside info.plist like uh, allow access to photo gallery and also need to access the camera in order to get images so i needed to add this stuff so that's what, that was what i quickly grabbed somewhere and then inserted it here because if you can see here uh it's, it's not uh we cannot find it anywhere around uh, this is their description so i think that's all let's see for the google ml kit if there's anything needed to add Okay, so far, I don't think there's anything needed to add for the ML kit. Yeah, we are good to go right now. So, uh, quickly, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to build this application. So, let me go to my info uh, main activity. Uh, yep, inside my main activity dot that. So, I'm just going to run this app quickly. On, I'll run it on the iOS bits. Okay, let me run it on, yeah, iOS bits. Okay, so just give it some few seconds for it to run. But I think there are some issues. Okay, automatically assigning platform IOS. Okay, so we need to actually uh, modify our... Uh, so for Android, I think we need to increase the minimum SDK to... Okay, we need to... Uh, Increase the minimum SDK to 21 to get this stuff to work for Android. And then for iOS, I'm going to uh, go to my runner. Okay, and go over to... No, my port file, sorry. I'm going to uncomment this stuff and then increase it to 13.0, which is the highest platform version, okay, to get all this stuff to work. So once that is done, I think what we need to do is just to run our application right now. So uh, quickly, I'm going to start running it now. I just hope there is no issue. All right, just give it some few seconds and it will be up. Okay, so while running this stuff, I got another error. So I don't know where this one is coming from. The iOS simulator deployment target is set to 8.0, but the range of supported de deployment target version is 9.0. Okay, so I don't know what is happening, but I think I need to run something inside here. So let me save these bits. Okay, then I think I need to update uh, let me run pod okay inside my ios directory so i'll just run pod in repo update okay okay once that is done i'll run pod install so let's just give this some few seconds to install everything okay yeah this is cool right we can go back now and run our app okay so I'll give this a few seconds and yeah. Okay, let's go this building uh, up. So few seconds and it will display on our screen. All right, guys. So our app is up and running and you can see it's actually moving. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just remove the whole of this bit. I think there's no need to remove this bit. Uh, I think what I just have to do is to add another button another floating action button so we'll just leave all these things the way they are but i think i need to just okay I will, i'm going to use this button here to do is going to show a dialogue a bottom sheet and that bottom sheet will let us to select whether we want to uh, fetch from gallery or camera okay so quickly i'll be creating a folder here so i'll be calling this one utils so inside this utils folder i'll be calling Okay, instead of UT, I think I should call a widget. I will should create another folder called widgets. Okay, so inside these widgets, I'm going to create a, a, a class 
uh yeah which is uh the image dialog okay no the mother dialog which is the bottom sheet yeah so i'll have something like this dot that so quickly uh it's gonna be a void uh, method so i'll say image picker uh mother like so and uh, i think it's going to have a uh, various properties so the first one is going to be a build contest and then the other ones which is for i think i'll create okay before now let me just uh, leave that bit first so i'm just going to return so what we want to do is just to show a bottom sheet here so i'll call a show model bottom sheet and we pass the contest form of uh, elevation to it to make it look uh, very nice okay so at uh, the child widget now i'm going to have uh, a test so it's going to be a test and the first one is going to be camera so if the user is actually selecting from camera and i can give this a style don't worry i'm going to show you guys this bit uh, later let me just uh, uh set the style for this first so i'm going to give you the font weight of uh bold and also give you the font size of 20 like so and uh, I think that's pretty much it. Yep. So I will terminate that and also close this bit as well. I think there's no need to close that bit. Yeah. So just get rid of it. All right. So inside here, and I'm going to have... Uh, okay. Uh, before I sh move on, let me just uh, display this image uh, model. So it will be displayed whenever we click on this, this button to scan photo. All right. So inside here, I'm just going to call it and if you notice it takes a contest so we need to import this as well all right save it up and if i click on this stuff it's going to bring up the mother so you can see the mother yeah so this is looking cool and great all right so i think i need to close this ones because they are not necessary okay uh so inside here and i'm going to create a bot uh, uh an alignment widget okay so alignment center so let's just uh, align it to the center of the test okay and also uh, I'll give it some padding of uh, let's say 15 like so yeah just to make everything look cool and great great all right so let's uh, close this uh, bring it up again yeah you can see we have camera camera but it's not nice so this will be gallery okay so now users have two options whether to select from camera or to select from gallery okay but now how do we handle the tap list in a no way so we can actually add uh on tap to this stop uh, gesture detector and now it has the on tap property yep okay and this side you can also wrap it to with a uh, gesture detector like so but uh, because i don't want to actually use uh for some reason i don't want to uh, write my method uh like handle any functionality inside here so what i'm going to do uh for us to actually listen to this on top property of camera from this main widget here i'm going to add some parameters up here which are void parameters so i think most of you might not know how to get this done but let's say we have a void callback we can have on camera tapped okay and then we can have another one which is for on gallery tapped okay so what i'm going to do now is just to return for the camera i will just return that property here on camera tap and here i'm going to return the other property which is on gallery tab all right so with this now i don't need to do anything here so i can close this bit and then i will listen to the events here so here we just have on, car on camera tab like so and then i can have uh on gallery tab like so as well all right so save that bit up then here you can just uh, let's just lock some events let's say camera and we can log another event here and we can say gallery so you can see how neat everything is now so if we close this bit and come up here if i click on camera you can see we are listening to the event camera uh, click on here we are receiving the event gallery just like so and everything works very well okay great now moving on to the next stage uh what we are going to do next now is to have 
we are going to create uh, the image picker. Uh, yeah, the pick image like a method that will handle the image for us. So for that to work, and remember we already added the dependency here, which is this uh, prospect determiner inside uh, this image picker dependency that will allow us to pick image uh, from the gallery. Okay. So quickly, I will go to uh, utils folder which I created, and I will just say uh, image picker class like so dot that. So inside here, and I'm just going to create a future because it's going to be a future of string. So that string is basically the part that is going to return for us. So I'll just call this one pick image, and then uh, think since we are using camera and gallery, it's very nice we actually create an image source. But let's leave that for now first. Let's move on. Move on. Then I will create an instance of the image picker which is image picker, yeah, like so. So this is just the instance of the image picker. Then uh, I think what I will do next is to create a string that actually gets the path for us, like so. Then uh, I can use try and catch because I know this thing, when I was testing it, I think I got some errors with iOS, yeah? So I needed to uh, wrap it with uh, a try and catch exception. Uh, yep, yeah, because iOS sometimes you don't need to trust what might you don't really know what might happen. So we can actually log the error, okay, just to be sure that everything is okay. Then inside the try block, and what I'm going to do now is just to uh, call the camera, okay. Uh, we can just say get image, like so. So I can await the response of this and then call picker dot uh, pick image and you can see it takes an image source. Okay, image source. The data type is of type source. So we can just say image source dot camera or dot gallery. Okay, but since we are actually going to be picking from camera and gallery, it's not advised we just pass camera because if we do it this way, it means we are going to create this function again. So what I'm going to do, I'll create a, a constructor here. Sorry, a parameter again for image source, and I will call this source. So instead of passing the image source directly, we just pass source here. And whenever we are passing this stuff, it's going to reflect inside here. Right? That's a nice one. So now I'm going to check if the get image, which is the part, if it's not null, that means the user picked something. Yeah. So I will set the part, which is this string part here to be the get image dot path like so but if it's null then i just have to pass the set the path to an empty string the way it was before okay then once that is done finally i just have to return the path because we are returning a string here right this is great so let's go over to our pick image uh, our function that is actually handling uh, this stuff so what i'm going to do here is just to call pick image so uh, be sure to actually uh, import this stuff. So pick image dot uh, then. So we need to await when the response is returned. Okay. Then we need to actually define the source. So in this case is going to be image source dot camera. Yeah. Okay. So once we get the response, we need to actually check if the stuff is empty or not. So if uh, the value is not equal to an empty string then we can actually uh take the image to the image cropper for the user to crop it and then carry out other activities i'll do the same thing for gallery as well then for gallery this is going to be gallery okay so make sure you save that all right so you can do a hot restart so that we can just test the bits everything we have actually implemented so far okay so click on scan photo and click on uh, gallery and you can see it's going to ask us to select so allow access to all photos and we'll be able to select an uh, image all right but i think uh ios does not have any form of uh, simulated environment for camera to work so uh yeah it's actually breaking our app so it's not really nice <laughs> yeah so i think we'll be testing uh with camera but if you try this with a physical device yeah i'm certain it's going to work but for iOS, it just uh, closes the app, so it's not nice. But I think I also know this stuff works for Android. Yeah, the camera. But don't worry, we are going to test all these bits 
uh, for Android as well. So, but first of all, let's round up everything with iOS, okay? Before we move over to Android, all right? So, uh, you just saw that bit and the app is currently building. So, let's just give it some few seconds. But while it's building, I think we need to quickly uh, work on our image cropper. Okay, so once the user selects, picks an image from the gallery, and if it's not null, navigate the user to a new page where they will now crop the image. Then after cropping the image, we will now take them to the final page where they are the uh, machine learning uh, plugin is going to now extract the text from the image. Okay, so to do that quickly, we're going to go back to this uh, depend uh, the image cropper uh package okay scroll down a little bit because i think it will take more time to actually type all of this stuff so what we need to do quickly just to copy this uh the uh, implementation here all right so uh you might want to do the same as well okay so i'm just going to copy that bit and then i will go over to i think i need to just grab this one alone instead of grabbing everything okay so copy this bit and we are going to go over to our uh, util so inside here we're going to create uh i think this is not supposed to be a util class but let's just put it inside here so i'll just call this one image cropper uh, view all right and it's it's going to take the path so after picking the image from the gallery we also need to pass the path yeah from the image so we're going to pass the path here and uh, yeah, build contest is needed as well. And we can use a sync if you want. So inside here, I'm just going to paste, yeah, that stuff I copied from the pack. Okay, I think he needed us to put this stuff, okay, to make it because I'm on, I'm using no safety. So the source part needs to be the part of the image. So I will quickly pass that inside here. Okay and uh yep that's all then the cropper we can actually change it to crop image for android and for ios you can change it to to crop image which is the title then you can actually mod if you can, you can go through this property to modify as many things you want to uh, yeah that is up to you and also based on your app preference so since our app color is blue i'm also going to change this stuff to blue as well all right so what i'm going to do now remember we have this crop file uh, we need to check if the user actually cropped the file or not so for that we are going to check if the crop file if it's not null that means uh, the user actually cropped something so we can just log uh, image cropped okay else that means the user did not crop any image we can just log uh, do nothing. Yeah, something like that. So inside this bit now once the image user crops the image We are going to send them to a new page where we are going to process the image and then extract the test from it Okay, so save this bit uh, do a hot restart Let me bring my simulator up and if I click here click on gallery select an image Okay, nothing happened that is because I've not called this image cropper view. Yeah, so I need I need to call it inside here once it's been yeah inside here i'm going to call it and uh, remember we actually need to pass the path which is the path coming from this value because if you look inside the peak image i'm actually returning the path if the user selected an image okay i'm actually returning the path so we need to actually pass that path inside here and then also pass the contest as well uh this should be value not path okay and uh, yeah i think i also need to do the same thing for camera in case it works all right save that bit so i'll bring this up select an image and you can see nothing happened platform exception multiple requests okay so i don't know why ios keep doing this stuff to me okay let's select an image nothing happens still it's telling me multiple requests platform exception so i don't really know what i did to this stuff but uh okay i think we just let's try for android to see what happens 
so i'm going to build the app for android uh run without debugging no i need to run with debugging so i'll start debugging here okay i think i need to key that section and uh, yeah start debugging for android so we need to see this bit working uh, i don't really know why ios keep uh doing stuff so difficult okay so uh while trying to run the uh the android for the simulator i encountered some error so uh, as you can see it's more like uh no point exception so and you can see it's actually uh going through a uh, grid that means uh currently uh, my internet connection was not able to download a uh, grid uh yeah completely so uh it actually corrupt corrupted uh the main grid file so to fix this stuff what i usually do is to remove the dot grid folder from my uh the root part and after removing it i will install it again using a stable internet connection so uh, for what i'm going to do now is to quickly go to my finder so if you're on windows or linux just go to your explorer or your file explorer wherever and you go over to your computer so from here we go over to users i think uh, root folder so from here now i think what i'm going to do is just to expose the hidden files which is command shift dot yeah to expose it i think for linux is uh control shift h or control shift l or android so what i'm going to do now i'm going to grab the gradle file which is around here which is this so i think this file is actually corrupt and if you try to open this it will show some error i believe I think it's actually corrupt so what we are going to do is just to quickly delete that file yeah the gradle folder completely so i'm just going to move it to bin save this bit yeah we can close it and then from here i'm going to use make sure you are actually in a stable internet connection and then once you are set uh, you can actually run the app again so this is actually going to rebuild uh it's going to download uh, the active files for the gradle once it downloads everything your app should run okay that's a quick fix yeah in case you encounter that error so as you can see now the app is currently running on android and uh, yeah so I'll just test those bits to see how it works so we'll click on scan photo uh, select gallery okay so i'll be able to select an image and uh, yep so yeah it takes us to the crop image page so uh from this crop image page uh this stuff i did here so if i click on this cancel button it calls this do nothing so nothing happens and if i click on image cropped it calls this one and from here that's when the user will be able to uh yeah now recognize the images all right so i will be working on that bit right now okay so let's quickly see how that is being done okay so uh i will i'm going to close this okay yeah once it is being clicked i will take them to a new page and that page i'll be creating it run right here now so i'll just call create a screen uh directory so inside here i'll call it a uh, recognition stage yeah that's okay so from here i'll just return a final string of part which is the part of the image okay all right so just create a simple constructor yeah i think that's okay then from here i'll just return a simple a bar or scaffold and we'll have this so uh quickly we'll just copy this organized test and go over to the image cropper so once the image cropper is successful we can just navigate to that page okay yeah i think that would be nice navigator push and contest so we can just use a uh, cupertino page route just to make everything have a smooth feel okay so i'll be using cupertino okay like so and uh, yeah we we'll just quickly return uh, the recognized page like so and once that is done make sure you import it 
and now I'm, I'm going to be passing this part which we just cropped inside as a constructor so we just have a part and call crop file okay crop file dot parts yeah that works so uh this stuff is having okay so you do not use bit contest across a single gap uh this is very important but in this case how are we going to list into the event because it's not really nice to use a build contest inside uh a sync gaps so if you look here now we are using a sync callback inside this uh, method so it's not a nice practice so for this i think what we need to do is to uh make this a future okay of string okay oh uh, okay yeah let's make it a feature of boolean all right so we're going to remove this stuff now so if the crop is not equal to null so we can just return true else we can just return false all right so i'm um, going back now to our main dot that where we have the image cropped i can just use dot then here to listen to the event uh, once it comes back okay <coughs> So I can say if the value is uh, equal to true, yeah, that means uh, the user uh, actually uh, performs some action to the image and also cropped the image. So uh, we are going to import Cupertino here. So uh, the partner is going to be this value here. So I think I'm going to go turn the boolean. I'm not returning the part. So I'm going to change this back to a string and uh, so what i will do instead is just to return the crop file dot part and if the user selected nothing it should be empty string okay yeah that was nice so i will come here instead of checking value that is true i will check if value uh, is not equal to an empty string okay so uh the thing is just going to be the value all right so this is cool and better Okay, so uh, this way we are not getting that uh, warning. We are not doing anything inside the async gap. All right, so I'm going to copy this uh, implementation and also do the same thing here too. All right, so uh, we are cool. And if I go back, okay, so I'll just select some images here and let me use this one. Uh, you can see this one does not have any text but let's use it and once you click uh okay something is wrong and it's supposed to navigate me to the recognized page so let's try this one more time again all right so it didn't take us there i'm going to do a hot restart here uh to be sure that everything works okay so from there we are going to select the image from the gallery and uh, yeah select crop you can see it takes us uh, to this recognized page so from this recognized page that's where we're going to perform all the magic and everything so i'll be creating some few things here which is uh, the first one is going to be uh, let's say it's going to be a boolean so we just have to check if the stuff is actually working like if it's recognizing like if it's busy so uh we need to show some few widgets okay then inside the init state i think we just have to call a simple function which will be process image okay so uh, we're going to create this method here yeah it's just going to handle uh, the processing of the image for us okay uh yeah so inside the body widget i will just have uh, something like this okay because we need to return the test that was extracted from the image yeah so i'll just return a body and here i will need to check if uh, is busy is equal to true so if it's equal to true we can just return uh, something like a circular progress indicator like so okay yeah i think this works and uh, yeah so if it's not true then we can just return a container having uh the test okay if you want it to be a detailable you can use a test uh form feed okay then you can actually specify a controller inside here like a test controller 
okay so uh, we can actually create it here so initially it's going to be empty except uh the stuff is completely uh recognized then it will now assign the test uh to the controller so i'll just quickly have a test editing controller here like so okay so if it's busy once we come to this page by default it's busy is false so once we go to the process image part and we are going to set state and then call the is busy state to be true okay then once everything finish uh processing then we have gotten the image we can now end the state here and busy state okay but we are going to work on all these stuffs later on but not now but i just want to show you guys how it's going to work okay so uh we can have some padding okay yeah so this is better you can see the test form feed here yeah it's actually showing uh so uh for some kind of uh, user experience i think it's better we add some hint test so it's going to be input decoration so let's just add some hint test uh test goes here Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. So, uh, if we click on this, this, this. All right. So you can see is busy. The state is busy now. Uh, I need to change this to force so that it's going to end the state. Yeah. So once everything is done, uh, processing. Okay. So we needed to end the state, but which I didn't do. So test goes here. All right. So now let's start the main magic that actually recognizes the test and everything. So for that bit, we'll be using uh, the Google ML Kit Test Recognition plugin. All right. So the first thing it takes is the input image. Okay. And uh, yeah, it takes the input image where we not then pass in the test. Uh, the image part okay so for this bits to work i'm going to copy this input image and go over to my code so right here which we are going to uh, process the image i'm going to create a constructor because this is i'm going to create a parameter sorry because this is where we are going to do everything that is needed so i will need to pass an input image so i'll call this one image yeah so we need to pass an input image here. Currently, you can see this stuff now is showing empty. So uh, for this bit, what I'm going to do is just to create an input image uh, from the image part that we got, okay, from this recognized page. So I will have something like input image from five part okay so you can actually get it from five you can get it from byte but for this i'll be using from five parts and now i'll be passing the widget dot part which we got from the cropped image okay like the full image part then inside here which requires the image uh the image uh, input image i'm going to pass it inside here like so okay then going back now so as you can see now this image part got this stuff so if i log this stuff you see that it's going to print out the uh image for us okay so you want to see that all right let's save this uh bring up as emulator go back so i'll click here click here click here and boom instance of image part so uh, i think that's pretty much what we need to do there so we can we are actually getting the image part and it's not null all right so we can just say five parts okay so i think it's going to print that out very well for us so let's go back again and try that same uh process yeah you can see the full five parts now which is printing out and we can get it all right but we are yet to process the image right to extract the test so going back here now, first thing we need to do is to create an instance of a recognizer, okay? So for this, we can just create test recognizer inside our app, okay? So, uh, yep, yeah, I will quickly go to the process image. So right inside here, we just create this stuff like so. Uh, test recognizer, recognizer, 
and the script uh, translation script dot latin so you can actually uh set the scripts you want if it's a chinese language you want to scan if it's a japanese uh, just go ahead and select the languages here but since we are selecting a uh, normal test i'm going to use uh, latin all right yep so uh moving on uh, to the next part what i'm going to do now is to follow on this process so we are going to call the recognize test await uh test recognizer or process image so this is what is going to handle uh, all the processing for us and from here now we'll be able to return uh the image that was processed from yeah the the test that was gotten from the image all right so we'll be working with this bit and you can actually look through here if you want to get the uh the test you just have to call recognize test dot test and you can look through it to get each of the corner points, uh, the rect, uh, the test, recognize languages, and all those stuff. Okay. Then once you are done, you can call text recognizer dot close. So this is pretty much easy. You can actually go to the example app to see how this stuff works. Okay. So quickly, uh, yep. Quickly, let's uh, do that bit. So I think it's just few lines of code, nothing much. So I'll make sure you make this stuff a sync. And you can see what we call the uh, final recognize test. Recognize test equal to await recognize test of process image. So this process image now is going to be this image that we just got. So I'm just going to pass the image, the input image there. Then save it. So we can now check. Uh, so I can just say if. Uh, basically what i just need to do just to set because we have a controller here for the test form field so once the image is done processing i'll just assign it uh, to the recognized test okay dot then we can have blocks dot test yep that works save it and uh, let's do a hot restart here you can see just uh, two lines of code for this. I mean, three lines of code for this, and it's just easy. So, uh, but under the new hood, it uses an OCR technology and ML to just sign and get those bits up. So, if I select an image without any any file, you can see it won't uh, return anything because if you can look inside that image, it does not have any test. So, uh, let's test with this long one. Uh, this image that has test okay so click you can see it actually process the test you know you are in love when you can say anything the person and you know they won't laugh at you so uh yeah this is actually it okay so you can see how we just extracted the test so in this case you can actually decide to i think this is, this should be clickable in some way All right, so I don't know why this is not clickable, but it's supposed to be clickable. Okay, it's breaking here. So I think what we need to do is to make this stuff multi lines, right? Uh, so we can actually have, uh, I think, uh, max line. Oops. Max line, let's see. Media query dot of contest dot size dot height i think this should do all right so i just hope okay yep so now it's going to be uh we can actually edit it okay yeah so you can decide to edit it so you can see how easy it is to actually extract a test okay you can see how easy it is to actually extract test what did i do uh how do i remove uh -huh. okay so you can see how easy it is to actually extract text from an image okay so uh let's go back now and see how to extract text from the other image all right so i don't know what is going on here let me do a hot restart i don't know why the emulator is doing this way Oops. All right, so I'm just going to quickly uh, close the emulator. I don't know why it's just fumbling like that. 
okay so uh for this let's run this bit for android but don't worry if this uh stuff doesn't work for your uh, ios simulator you don't have to worry just run it on your physical device then it's definitely going to run yeah on your physical device is going to run so you don't really need to be scared about that uh, because I know I tried it uh, when I was uh, trying to implement this stuff. I tried it on simulator and I couldn't get the result I wanted. But uh, after trying it with a physical device, yeah, it worked. Uh, but currently, I cannot connect a physical device here yeah, to this uh, uh, laptop now to test for that. But just be assured that it's going to work for you, okay? Yeah, so uh, that bit out, uh, let's also run this stuff too for Android, okay? So, but why Android um, simula emulator will be running, uh, we are just going to quickly uh, test it again on the uh, iOS simulator. So, if it doesn't work, yeah, we just have to try it for Android and test every bit from there, okay? So, let me just run the debugging to be running while we are testing for the iOS bit, okay? Uh, don't worry this code will be available on github i'm going to push it for everyone to see okay so scan image so remember i said that uh, ios does not have any simulated environment where we can actually capture uh, image uh, yeah so we're just going to select from gallery all right so i just clicked something now all right uh, loading photos uh, there's no image in those photos and you can see the cropped image uh, does not really load up so i don't know that's actually an issue and uh, it does not really see our android in action so we can test this uh, i think android you can actually use a simulated environment for camera yeah but since this image does not have any test in it so it won't really be nice okay and uh, yeah i think i need to show us how the cropper works so let's go back and select gallery let's select this image so i only want to get uh the test of uh it took me i don't want to get the name of the uh the person that wrote the quote I only just want to get this stuff so i can just crop that select this and you can see it took me quite a long time to develop a voice and now that i have it i am going to be silent so so far guys you can see how easy it is to create an, a simple OCR application, OCR optical character recognizer, recognizer, or you can say optical character reader. So, uh, so far, you can upload any image of your choice as long as it's written, it's printed, sorry, as long as it's printed and it's typed. So, it's going to accurately uh, retrieve the test and display it for you, okay? So, you can convert it, uh, you can add it up with the previous video I did where you can actually add a voice in to speak, to read uh, the test out for you, okay? You can actually do that and yeah, go have fun. Uh, yeah, you can deploy to Play Store because I believe there are actually apps like that that does OCR, yeah, image recognition, uh, test recognition from images. So go ahead, play with it, have fun. I will see you guys in the next video. And uh, yeah, before you leave, do not forget to subscribe, do not forget to like and share this video. Thank you so much, guys, for your time and everything. I will see you in the next video. Peace.